Welcome everyone to the Deerfield Planning Board meeting uh, this evening, uh, November 15th, 2018. It is uh, seven o'clock here at the Deerfield Town Hall, um, Conway Street in South Deerfield. Uh, we're opening this um, evening with the ZBA. Um, we have only just had a meeting uh, recently, last Thursday, so there are no minutes to be read. Um, and I believe we're pretty much caught up with the mail at this point. Um, and if there's not any other public commentary, I'm going to pass this to my colleague. Open the public hearing. Right, you got to. Oh, uh, uh, so we'll open, the the, continue the public hearing um, concerning the site plan review for a large solar installation to be located on Pan Am Southern LLC property at 100 Railroad Yard, Railroad Yard Road, Assessors Map 7. Lots seven, five. Continuing from um, the meeting of um, September 12th. Did we open the meeting though on Thursday? What's that? It's continuing the meeting not from September 12th, but the 8th. Continuing our meeting, <clears throat> sorry, this is incorrect, from uh, November 8th. Go ahead. Okay, and I'd um, like to welcome you all to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting as well. Um, we've all reviewed the minutes. Um, I believe there's one um, correction that we need to make, um, and that being that um, Mr. Decker had to uh, excuse himself from voting on the matter. Which matter was that, Bob? I wrote it all out for you. Oh, we're <laughs> prior to the hearing, Robert J. Decker III excused himself from the hearing of Deerfield Industrial LLC. Okay. And here you can have this Excuse me, I'm playing secretary tonight too. So, <laughs> um, so all in favor of accepting that change to the minutes? Opposed? Okay, we'll we'll correct that in the minutes of the last meeting. Um, and we are here for two items. Um, the one that Rachel indicated, the continuance of the solar electric installation, 100 railroad yard, map seven, lot five. And then afterwards, Brian Arthurton of Two Feathers Restoration would like clarification of his special permit restrictions. So at this time, I'll turn the meeting back over to Rachel, so the planning board can <coughs> continue. And thank you. So our continuance um, had uh, to do with the fact that um, this property um, is uh, presents a complication because it is uh, not zoned for the uh, use that is uh, being proposed by the applicants. Um, it is. A lar extra large, a lar extra large solar array, um, and so it came to our attention that that was something that we could not actually move on, <clears throat> given our current uh, solar zoning uh, regulations. Um, and so we then uh, passed <laughs> passed the baton to our uh, colleagues on the zoning board to consider two um, issues. First. Um, a variance to the use table, um, granting a variance to the use table because of the size, essentially, um, of this installation and setback concern. Um, I actually attended that meeting. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals then um, deferred the decision uh, given the questions and the concerns that were coming to them uh, at that meeting, and that was just uh, November, what was your last, no, your last meeting? November 1st. No, November 1st, uh, the previous Thursday. Um, but their, their concerns were that uh, the considerations that were being brought to them by the neighbors, the abutters um, and neighbors, were more um, issues that should be dealt with at the zoning level um, on a permitting basis. 
However, it then comes to us again, and at this point, we are not in any kind of position to override our own zoning board, I mean, our own uh, planning board um, regulations that were drafted by this body um, and passed by the town um, to limit the large scale solar array you, in those commercial districts as indicated here. So, um, we listened to the applicants. I, I see that they have um, some response to concerns. We um, have heard from the abutters and the, sorry, the abutters and the neighbors. Um, and I think there's more that has, there's more information this evening um, from the uh, neighbors about their concerns about this, um, this project. So I would ask that if there are more concerns, is that okay, uh, well, Chair? Well, uh, you know what I was wondering is if we could define how we, uh, what, <coughs> what our procedure what's, is. What's what's happening and, and what our <coughs> problems are with it and, and mm -hmm. what we don't have problems with. In other words, mm -hmm. the, the, it's not zoned, um, it's not zoned for anything over the two, the 10 acres and the two. 2.7. Two point, yeah, so so that's that's a big issue right there. Mm -hmm. And I guess um, as the zoning board and the planning board, I mean, we can decide to say we, we think it's in the best interest of the towns and, and we can do it. But um, what we heard the other night was that um, the neighbors had two basic complaints. One was, was the, uh, the clearing of trees and the other was the uh, noise that they were they were related anyways, and if the if the peop, if the I see the gentleman here from the uh, butters, and they weren't necessarily against the project, but the noise and tree situation was the biggest problem. So I, I don't know how everybody else feels on the planning board and the ZBA, but um, we have another project very similar to this that we approved um, next next to it at the Allstate Asphalts plant so and as far as I'm concerned it comes down to the neighbors feelings and, and how we're going to remedy that uh, that's just my opinion I don't know how the rest of the board feels here um, well yeah yes and yes I think um, there is another concern which is the connection with the um, applicant and the DEP given the brown site um, uh, concerns um, and notifications that need to be made. Um, so that's yet a, another a third concern. If you will, from the planning board. Yeah, 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 yeah. The other two. So were traffic, from the sound. Neighbors. Uh, yeah. Well, this is from neighbors as well. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so I think at this point, are you willing to open to public comment? Because we there probably is more. Or maybe you should state where you're at with it and see how you feel general generally. Well, I think when when your all of your questions have been answered, then you can turn it over to us, I and then we can comment and discuss it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But right. I think you'll need to finish and close, and then we can start. Oh, okay. I, well, I think I, I don't know if we can close, though, Frank. That's the problem: is that um, we would have to make some kind of deliberation, mm -hmm. and um, our deliberation cannot be in advance of yours. That's ergo the joint mm -hmm. uh, meeting yeah. because we can't start a permitting process without the variance, the use variance. Yeah. Um, and I think your setback issues are probably more dependent on what we have come up with. But meanwhile, that's an awful lot of piggybacking of concerns. So yeah. anyway, I don't know that yeah. we can actually I, th I think I, I think I'd feel more comfortable if you guys say what your objections are and what your what you understand the situation to be, and then we can go back and forth on it and uh, kind of do it simultaneously rather than. Mm. Um, at, at the last meeting, we heard some concerns from the residents, and there was a lot of them. And we tried to defer them to your board mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because we need to see what the plan is before we can make a, make a decision on it. Um, you know, the, the setback, of course, being one, the, the, the trees, the, the height of the solar array, there, there was a lot of concerns and um, we're not really able to, to 
to make a decision until we have a, a plan that everybody agrees on. Okay. <clears throat> well, I, 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 believe that, I believe that people didn't necessarily, that I didn't hear anything about the height of them. Um, that, yep. was at, that was at the that, that, that was, was at, at our at that was your one. meeting. Mm -hmm. I didn't, we yep. didn't hear that at our meeting. Right. That was a traffic concern. We talked about that. Oh, Blair. coming in and out? Mm -hmm. yep. and oh, okay. All right. I'm, yep. okay. Yeah, the headlights on the yeah. panels. And, so um, I guess, access. In, in, in my opinion, it, it pretty much comes down to, you know, the, the butters and because it's it's we're going to make an exception to the to the zoning if we say <clears throat> whatever we do and then you're the one that's going to make say okay we're we're going to um, we're going to approve the um, site the, the, site, mm -hmm. the variance and all that even though it's outside of the zoning of the mm -hmm. town of Deerfield yes. so I guess it comes down to we have to get together and figure how the the uh, people that are proposing this situation and the tenant and the uh, and the neighbors, and if they can come to some kind of an agreement, then that would flavor how I would make a decision. That's just me, though. Yeah. I think I think we should open to public comment. Okay. I think Let's that if that. there's more uh, information that we need to hear about from the public, we would ask that we, they would step forward now or, and speak. Um, tell us your name, your where your your address, and then your comment. The mic's here. Name's Josh. Name's Josh Schaefer, 791 River Road. Uh, another concern I have is they have floodlights in the railroad. And at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I took pictures of where they're going to clear. I can see them as I go by between the trees. I live, I, we have our shades closed at night because the lights beam at us already, the ones that we can see. When they level those, the forest there, there's 15 floodlights on each side that are just gonna be wide open. And these don't have any shading on them. So that'll be a nuisance to us also. Um, then the other thing is the trains idle on that side. So across from me and then down, well, on the, the side towards Moody's. But anyways. Um, the east side? Uh, if you're gonna be southwest. Southwest. The one where they level in the trees. They call the east end of the yard, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Thanks. they idle back there, and if they level all the trees, now we're going to have the smells of the diesel and all that stuff, you know, and the trees, you know, oxygen, they help clean up that. So we're not going to, we're going to have more direct smells coming out into the road. When the wind changes, we're all going to get affected by that also. So that's another concern. Um, so, and, I mean, if, you gave them their setbacks and stuff, and they leveled the trees to the road, and, they, and they, you gave them their other 25 feet on the back, you know, we're gonna have nothing but lights flashing. Even if their solars are, look nice, we're gonna have, you know, 40 foot tall light poles without shade, just beaming, you know, because that they need to see their tracks, but uh, they're not shaded. So that's, that's a concern. And you live on the other side of the road. You're, you're I right. face the railroad. Facing the railroad. Yeah. yeah. So they're three houses down, they're clearing here. Yeah. And then a house and a half down, basically, they're clearing here. So I'm going to see both sides when they clear the rest of those trees and they're all those trees. We're going to have lights, you know, higher than my second story, shining across. Mm -hmm. Without so, the trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we already see them. And at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, they're bright lights popping through. Mm -hmm. And at night, they look like stars just shining at you. They're so bright. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just looking through the trees, never mind with them gone. So. Now, Sorry?
pick up so there were more of a them. And that would kind of be a we didn't uh, just gonna say point out to where you are under here. So we're gonna be looking at, you know, the this this is lights everywhere back there. So you can already see all these lights behind them right now. So if they spin up, you know, this will get all this over there, but either way we're still gonna see these and if they spin up these trees here, we're gonna see them. But either way, people driving by are gonna see straight through all the um, just in the area that they have flagged to clear, there's like 12 that I counted in the daylight at 2.30 in the afternoon that I videoed just driving through that you can see all the lights popping through. So um, when it's darker, you're going to definitely see them. Um, never mind on the other side too because over here there's, there's, there's pretty trees but there still are taller trees there to kind of block it. So are the lights on the other side of the tracks pointing out we towards the project? If they're, if they're right here or if they're, they're, they're staggered through so they can work on all their tracks, but they're pretty much all along. If you drive down the road right now and you look, you're just going to see all, even now because the trees are thin, but when you have trees still, it's not so annoying as just the one just sitting there, you know? Um, I mean, as it is now, there isn't anywhere in my yard I can sit without seeing one already. Um, but it's going to be a lot more open. You know. And also, the, the idle in this area over here. Um, the idle a lot right in here. Um, where you're not clearing these trees or anything. But I think this is part of the area. I don't, I can't, I don't know how big their areas, I don't walk over there and see where all the trains are exactly parked. Mm -hmm. so. Do I have a slide? But, yeah, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> here's, a, here's some paper. Yeah, he's done. Uh, Steve Assing, 795 River Road. Uh, can I suggest that these guys talk about this here first? Because this, <coughs> this is a new mass. This is like a draft yeah. to... Because we get an extra this is looking like that's not going to be removed at all, and there's proposed arborvitaes here, so right. I might not have any questions at all if they okay. start with that. Um, okay. I, I just I think if there's other comment from the public, yeah, first. Just. Hi, my name is Bruce St. Peter's. I've lived on Rob's Way in South Deerfield. First, I'd like to say that the proposed use of this property is, is an excellent use for this property that appears to have very limited potential if and only if all the abutters have no objection and the project falls within the bylaws. However, I feel this request for variance is in direct conflict with our zoning bylaws that were meticulous and, meticulous and did, diligently created by the planning board using public input bylaws from other towns Having, re having it reviewed by the FERCOG, submitting it to town meeting, and having it approved. The request is asking the ZBA to disregard their zoning bylaw on several counts to allow this installation in a commercial district, which is specifically not allowed by Section 2230. One, disregard the present commercial district zoning to allow an industrial use in such. Two, disregard the generating size over two megawatts so it will be allowed in a commercial zone, which it is not. Disregard the area size, I'm assuming it's over 10 acres, which is not allowed in a commercial district. Disregard the dimensional setback requirements as set forth in section 3851. Section 2200 general reads, in part, no structure shall be erected or used on land except as set forth in section 2230 use regulation schedule, unless exempted by section 2250, which deals with existing non-conforming uses. Section 2230 specifically disallows extra large scale mounted solar electric installation in a commercial zone district and only allows it in an industrial district with a special permit with a reference note that solar installations are subject to provisions of section 3800. 3821 requires compliance with by laws, bylaws and regulation. This project does not comply. Section 3840 special permit were required by 2230, a special permit may be granted. The project does not comply with section 2230, so a special permit should not be allowed. I don't believe that section 3842 criteria would apply as section 3840 does not apply. 
The other variance requested for a setback change, section 38451 setback requirements wording is used, the minimum setback requirement shall be as follows. So therefore the chart should be used as a printed as that, as that is how the town voted. Also, since the installation is not permitted in a commercial district, there is no discussion of this. If this project was in an industrial zone where it would be allowed, then the setback requirement would be the 50 feet. Section 5220 under uh, uh, powers reads to uh, powers of the ZBA to hear and decide appeals and petitions for variances from terms of this bylaw with respect to particular land or structures as set forth in GL Chapter 40A, Section 10. I believe that GL 40A, which is zoning in the Mass General Laws, Section 10, which is variances, would prohibit giving a variance that would allow, in quote, a use not otherwise permitted in the district in which the land or structure is located. I realized there was a, uh, a larger installation was previously allowed, but that does not necessarily mean that a precedent was set. It probably should have set in a motion to review of the present bylaws to see if changes were necessary, especially since there is a stronger interest in large and extra large solar installation in Deerfield. I do think it would be a shame to lose the economic benefits and the green benefits that would be be provided by this installation, but I feel there is no sense in creating zoning bylaws and use regulations if every time someone wants to do something that is not specifically allowed in a zone district, the planning board of the ZBA can change the zoning district's allowances. If use is not permitted in the district, then the only way that should be changed is by legislative body, the voters, voting to amend the bylaws. As I previously stated, I believe that GL 40, Chapter 40A, Section 10 would prohibit giving a variance by any board. Uh, thank you, and I not if, if you want a copy of the Chapter uh, uh, 40 that I'm uh, <coughs> going No, thanks. By, I did have time to review the law. Pardon? I did have time to review the law, sir. Thanks. Okay. Does anybody else need a copy? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Steve Anderson. I'm uh, 617 River Road. I can probably just tilt mm -hmm. it up, maybe, Steve. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just, uh, I'm a neighbor of uh, Lynn Rose's, and uh, she asked me to ask you whether you had received the email that she sent, I, I think, did. today that spells out a number of the concerns that she uh, has knowledge about. And I'm wondering if, if all the members got a copy of no. that. Not all of them just got a copy. So I'm wondering if that could be arranged. Yes. I mean, yes, <coughs> that could be arranged, but that hasn't been arranged yet, and it was this morning, so we haven't, we haven't disseminated it yet. Because okay. it came only to me and not to everybody else. So and, and she and said I'm you not, might not, read it. Pardon? You would, might I identify the concerns. Do you have you have this what she sent us? I have what she sent. You probably should but, let uh, us yes, know. I'm, that. I'm not in. personally qualified to... Uh, elaborate or address. You can specify uh, that this is what Lynn asked you to elaborate. Yeah. So um, the, 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 uh, the first one is that um, the lake asphalt portion of this proposed project He's uh, gonna fix it for you. Thanks. Was um, is a, a <coughs> hazardous waste site and the DEP um, and she put in a request to the DEP to, uh, to comment on this project and how it might impact uh, the work that was done to remediate the site and, uh, and if, there might, if there were any issues uh, in this, as a res that uh, might be as a result of this project. Mm -hmm. um, she also mentioned that there's supposed to be, supposed to have been an activ activity use limitation uh, which is a kind of deed restriction placed on the property uh, to limit certain types of activities to prevent disturbing the contamination and uh, apparently this hasn't been done yet. Um, as a part of this uh, hazardous waste remediation, the, um, the town of Deerfield was able to gain a public participation status uh, that included um, being able to hire a consultant to 
a comment on the work that the railroad was doing to remediate. Um, <coughs> and I think Lynn thinks that this project should come under the uh, aegis of this public participation process, which is separate from either of these boards. Um, I think th those are the essential uh, elements of, of what she had to say. She had some other so uh, sound concerns, which I think uh, overlap what uh, the other uh, neighbors have expressed. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I have one copy of this. Uh, yeah, I'll give it to Paul. I think that one of the concerns here, um, and <coughs> these two piggyback Bruce's concerns and um, these concerns about DEP, Again, there's a jurisdictional issue with DP that would not be as concerning were it already zoned in the, for the use that is being proposed. Um, and so I don't um, imagine that approaching DP is appropriate until it's already m moving along. Uh, on the other hand, um, we're, we'd hate to move this along in, in any kind of way um, Against our bylaws, against the regulations that we can, that we crafted, um, without knowing more from DP. So, uh, if, if there's not any, any other public comment, we can ask the applicant, and then Steve will maybe have his answers. Uh, thank you very much. My name is John Dupinski, and I'm an environmental consultant with ERM. And actually, I'm the chap that did clean up Lake Asphalt. Uh, the MCP cleanup process is a privatized process where the LSP of record is the person who is responsible for cleaning up the site. The site is at near closure. We do not need an activity and use limitation to proceed. Uh, and we do not need a public uh, a hearing because this is not a response action. This is basically construction at a uh, hazardous waste site. Basically, it's going to make the site uh, come back into uh, useful use bring tax dollars to uh, the town of Deerfield. So it's really a beneficial reuse of the property. Um, I'll be more than happy to talk to Lynn. I've had many, many conversations with Lynn, but from a statutory perspective, uh, DEP would not be involved in this since it's not a response action. It's no different than uh, you folks doing something at your landfill. You don't need DEP permission to put in a water line or something like that. It's basically under, under that program. Um, the sound, we talked to you folks about the sound uh, last week and the, also the issue of the lights. Um, unfortunately, we can't control what happens in uh, our neighbor's backyard. It's the Pan Am Southern Railway. Uh, we wish we could uh, reduce the noise. We have some ideas that we can talk to the planning board. The planning board and the public are very concerned about the noise, but we can't really stop the noise because that's a, a commercial operation that's allowed by your bylaw, it's allowed, that operation is allowed, so there's nothing we, as the applicant, and the adjoining parcel, uh, correct. For example, if someone came in there and did some commercial development, which is allowed under your bylaw, would you be requiring that applicant to do some noise reduction on the rail yard? I, I don't think you could, because the rail yard is, I hate to use, it's a pre-existing condition, it's there. Uh, perhaps, under your bylaw, you may have some control on the lighting. I mean, most uh, communities have a, a lighting bylaw where lights have to be uh, shown, uh, shown down so they don't uh, interfere with the public. But there may be a safety reason out there for, for why the lights are uh, operating the, the way they are. I do not know. As for the sound, um, we have come back with an idea of doing some really robust planting around, around the areas that would be cut. And the areas in green would not be cut. Those areas would remain as is. And the only place out there where there are really, really mature trees, now this is portion down there. Everything else is basically scrubby trees. And anyone who's been in town a long time, you no know, Lake Asphalt was there. The old, I think it was Agway uh, loading docks were there. So it's basically a really disturbed site. And I think this use is a great use for the parcel because because if something like this doesn't happen, it's either going to be developed commercially with a lot more truck traffic. And this is not, uh, it's not meant as a threat. Just trying to think what would happen to this parcel. And being someone who, uh, in my previous, you know, just recently sat with you folks sitting now, 
I, I think it's what is the best interest of the community. In Chapter 40A, Section 10 gives the ZBA the ability to look at everything and say, what is in the best interest of the community? Clearly, they can uh, uh, have a variance to the zoning bylaw. The zoning bylaw, when the zoning bylaw gets passed, cannot in imagine everything's going to happen in town. And that's where the ZBA has the, the authority to look at a proposed project, see how it fits into the character of the town, see how it benefits the, the town, and they can make that decision under Chapter 40A, Section 10. They have the authority to do that. So we talked about doing some acoustic monitoring. And I did talk to our acoustic engineers, and they said, that's fine. But since this isn't a, a constant sound, we talked about uh, you know, putting a sound barriers on the highway. But sound barriers on the highway are for a continuous, continuous sound. Here, the sound is intermittent. And it mainly comes from what's called the hump. It's this area here where it comes from what? Class I Hump? The hump, okay. H-U-M-P. And that, that's exactly what it's called. Okay. And so what you hear, the neighbors hear is that bang when the uh, cars get hooked up. But it's not continuous. Sometimes it's very continuous, uh, perhaps a lot, but other times it's quiet. So we don't have a problem going out there, maybe this time of year before. You know, all the leaves are off the trees, doing some acoustic monitoring and just see what it looks like. And then once we do our clearing, do some more acoustic monitoring, see what it looks like. And then what's this is the shocking. Do the acoustic monitoring and see what it looks like. But I, I don't think we're going to come up with a good remedy other than what we've had here. And as I said, this entire area gets protected. And that's where the major residents are right here in that zone area. Um, if we could put more arborvitae here, we would. Putting it on the applicant's property. Um, well, not the applicant's property. The, the property pro owner. Yes, property. Right. Yeah, exactly. But the the, property the developer would be putting it. And I, I think for the light issue, we, you know, I, I am the consultant for Pan Am as I help them. Clean. I'll, I will talk to them and see what we can do. But there's no guarantee that, may, as I said, it may be a safety issue regarding the, the lights at the rail yard. So, <coughs> but most of the classification happens. Do you, do you know what kind of lighting it is they have there? I, I do not know. I, I can check. I just don't know. Yeah. The reason I ask is that I live on Sugarloaf Street, and they changed the lights there to LED lights. Okay. And, and I noticed it almost immediately the day they changed them that it didn't shine in my bedroom window anymore. Okay. Hmm. I, I can check. And there may be floods for safe. I just don't know. So I, I'm sorry. I don't have that knowledge. But I can check for you. That, that's correct, that's correct. And this, uh, Dana was here last time. We're, we're far out, so down here, this actually continues through the main level 300 feet. And I think one of the other issues was um, a glare from uh, the road. These panels don't really have uh, any glare associated with them. And I think uh, when you were having the discussion on the other solar project in the farmland, that issue came up and basically uh, they said there's no glare. I think the other thing that came up was uh, the visibility of the panels from the road. If you look at the elevation where the panels would be constructed, that's elevation 177. River Row is about elevation 185. And if we put a robust row of six to eight foot arborvitaes along there, you're not, you're not going to see anything. And um, one of the things we did talk to the board about, you know, I know you don't like conditions, but perhaps one of the conditions of the approval would be that the planning board goes out and views the plantings. And if the plantings aren't acceptable, additional plantings would be uh, uh, put in place. And that's typically, I said my other position, that's what we usually do is say, you know, we really want to see what it looks like. You know, someone says they're going to put six plants and it doesn't, you know, you go out and look at it and if it's not good, put more in. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that answered, I think that answered most of the questions. But. Okay, the only, no, I, I, the only thing I, I, I didn't hear you address was um, the smell. There was another, uh, this gentleman, Josh, over here, um, said something about the smell. I don't know what I can do about the smell. I mean, uh, um, because this time of year when the, uh, the leaves are off the tree and if the locomotives are idling there, you're going to smell the diesel fuel. Uh, 
I'm not even sure in the summer when uh, the leaves are on the trees, if there's a little bit of wind blowing, you're still going to get the uh, diesel emissions. There is, under the statute, uh, the railroad's allowed to idle their diesels for a certain amount of time. That's maybe something, you know, the ZBA and the planning board to work with the railroad. But there is a statutory requirement that they can idle for a certain amount of time. There was some concern also about access of Bruce, what is Bruce's neighbor? I, I think one of the... One of the abutters. If I remember correctly, the way the access was going to come in was sort of flaring out, and we agreed we would push it so it didn't flare out. I think the other thing uh, that came up was during construction, we want to make sure the construction vehicles and the vehicles exiting would stop before they go into River Road right. so we have uh, stop signs there. So, uh, I don't know if there any other questions. Are there other questions from the neighbors? I guess in first closing, thank you very much. I realize. It's not an easy process, who goes first and who doesn't go first. Yeah. But uh, I do think someone who's sat where you folks are sitting right now, when you look at the use and the potential use, this use will be here for 20 to 25 years. It's going to stay like that. It's going to be benign. And the uh, impact on town service is going to be very minimal. Well, the town will get you know, a, a fairly substantial uh, income under the pilot program. So thank you. Uh, I have a question. Because I didn't hear. So, last meeting, they presented, right? So, Bob is here, so he's definitely mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. You'd rather black coat? the project with a 100 foot setback. Yeah, okay, so one, one, of, one of the questions yeah. came up on the chain link fence. Most chain link fences are you know, white steel that we would agree to make it black so it blends in so the neighbors wouldn't see the fence. And there are also, you know, you can put camouflage things in there too to make the fence disappear, but we more than happy to do that. How high are the chain link fences you're going to install? I'm sorry? How high were the chain link fences you're going to install? Six feet. Just six feet? Typically, uh, you did get an order conditions from the Conservation Commission. Typically, they like a six to 12 inch uh, Clearance right. under the, uh, right. the base so the critters can shoot around. So we'll do that too. One of the reasons I was asking is I, if you go around UMass, they have a lot of you know eight or ten foot chain link fences, and they have a, a perforated green mesh that they put right on the <coughs> fences. You can kind of see through it, but you really can't. And I think that would address a lot of the light concerns, and uh, you know for the neighbors as well if that was applied to the fences. Yeah, we can and, agree to do that. That's not a problem. You know, especially since the elevation changes. This might be a bit of a specific question, but the arbor vitaes that you put in, um, do you know how big they are when they go in and what their expected growth rate is? Three foot, four foot? Good. I already heard them as well. Um, I was going to say, since we're putting it not just along the panels, um, kind of just on the edge of our property, I think we would propose something like four to six feet um, just to get that maintained height right away. And they do grow um, between 24 and 36 inches every year. Mm -hmm. So they a staggered run, so they're yeah. We would, we would, that's why we would propose um, two rows of them and stagger them, so then we would have you know no visual part of panels from standing right in front of them. Right. And then if the ZBA and the planning board wants to come out and look at the planting and say this isn't good enough, we need more, we're more than happy to do that. And that that could clearly be a condition. Yeah. I just, so um, during our conversations with the CONCOM, the planning board, the ZBA, um, one of the, the butters, uh, Bruce, down here on the southern array, he was concerned about his um, existing access road that goes to the back half of this property. Um, our design, I just wanted to clarify, uh, completely avoids that. We're not planning on touching any of that, and that will be maintained so we can still access that back half. That was, yeah. Yeah, but I just wanted to make sure to get that on record. Yep, that. thank you. So if I could just point out something to the board, that this is 
this is where, where Josh and I are in this area right here. So I think you could ask again about the, 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 the odors going on. If this, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that area right there is not being disturbed, then, then there's going to be no change. There's no, you know, it's the odors are the odors, like they say. And I, I'm, I'm good with this. This is, this is great. It's, it's going to look aesthetically nice, and, and we'll still have a buffer. And, and I agree with, rather, I'd rather see this in there than some other industrial outfit going in there. And okay. even with the setback variance and all that, because like John said before, it can be 25 feet if there's some sort of industrial company going in there, whereas they're at 50. You know, I know, I know we're, we're pushing for the 100, but if they got to have the 50, then I'm, I'm okay. There's uh, one other person here tonight. Uh, the con oh, go ahead. You can just pull it out. Do just like slide it, slide it right towards you. And pull it out. Um, hi, <coughs> can you hear me? Yep. My name is Ava Gibbs, and uh, Steve and I actually are not the butters. We live at 617 River Road. Uh, we do hear, even where we are, we hear the. I forgot what you called it. The hump. Oh. The hump, <laughs> um, and we, you know, we hear it. Um, and as, as you said, it's intermittent and all this. But um, so, I am not on the butter. So I don't feel that I. Um, my viewpoint is that I, I really want a solar. I would. I am for solar, and I am for a good use of that. Uh, you may have heard that the salt building. We were totally against that. That is. A, that was a horrible use. <laughs> And you know this, the traffic and everything, but I want to. So to me, with what you have talked about, um, this seems okay. But I do want to say that I'm not in the butter, and I don't want to speak for them. You know. So um, you know, Josh, if you have more to say, of you know, Dana's not here. I don't know what's happening. And Jody, do you want to say anything? Because you're right there also. I would be fine with it. I'm. You know, I don't know how you stop uh, the noise, you know, because I think that just might be going on. But maybe with this double row of arbor vine, but... Um, I, so I just, this is just my two cents, but I am not in the butter, so I hesitate to, you know. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. You're a neighbor, nonetheless. Um, I think one other person I might call on tonight, um, Daniel Russell was uh, Concom. Concom the, uh, this proposal went before Concom. Just if you want to hear from the uh, reviewer, the peer reviewer <coughs> of the project. Uh, Nathaniel Russell with Thank GGA. You. Thank you for coming this evening. So we, uh, we were retained by the town to perform a third party review of both the NOI and the uh, site plan application. We did that. We provided some comments to the applicant through the town uh, on the NOI initially, uh, specific to stormwater, uh, to make sure that the proposed development would be in accordance with the state town regs as well as the state regs. Uh, they responded to those comments, and, and we have no real concerns at this point um, with regards to stormwater. We did also review the site plan application. We provided comments, uh, and Rachel, I think I, I forwarded that email mm -hmm. to you. Uh, we provided those last week to uh, to John and to the planning board. Um, you know, all of our comments I would characterize as relatively minor, either clarifications or uh, paperwork, if you will. Uh, just making sure that all the proper coordination with uh, local officials have been done. Um, we did obviously point out the fact that the proposed use is not in accordance with the town code, but that's not something that we are in a position to render an opinion on that's that's certainly something that the uh, the board the zba and, and say uh, planning and zoning needs to make a decision on so i'd be happy to answer any questions about the application uh stormwater so you didn't look at soils that was not i mean not per se not relative to the brownfields that wasn't no um you know my understanding is that there is no significant earth disturbing activity proposed right. here uh the areas that are over the Lake asphalt portion, I think, are going to be in ballasted foundations, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So there wouldn't be any penetration of existing cap or cover. 
Uh, you know, the only soil work will be minor regrading to install access roads and to level portions of the site before they uh, install the found, install the, the array. And you're not the DEP, but that's just a... No, uh, but I can say that my experience, what John has said about the, the site being regulated under the MCP and the process yeah. is consistent with my understanding of the regulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Don't start yawning now. <laughs> how, how, how would the, uh, the um, butter's concerns be if something goes on? If we if we approve this, what would their how would they put input into this at that point if there was something they didn't uh, think was right? You mean the conditions? Yes. Though that would be part of our well, I special that, permitting. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's what we're talking about. But that really, honestly, I think is now um, we're not going to start talking about special permitting until we pump this to our, our neighbors here to the left. Um, and I and I do want to kind of take a straw poll here. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think everybody's spoken. So we, should, so. So we so. should probably close the public, close the hearing, public and hearing and then we can. But then it's well, um, um, what if what if we want to discuss it and we well we discuss it after, after. after. okay all right all right <laughs> yeah okay it's, it's real simple. i know it is really simple <laughs> let's close the public hearing um so uh, this is now it's uh is 750 749 and we're closing the public hearing and um we are going to I, I think talk actually. Talk okay, so it. here's here's my here's my I'd take like on it. I'd love to hear from you. It uh, it is in direct vi direct conflict with conflict. our zoning regs. Yeah. Um, as a citizen, I think it's underutilizing the pro property. However, if I were a neighbor there, I would be begging to have that put in, mm -hmm. because I know now for the next 30 years, mm -hmm. that's what we're going to have. It's not going to have any traffic, you know, or it's not going to increase any traffic other than the building phase. So I, I think in this situation, I mean, At least the we, we need to usage. we need we need to defer to the, what the neighbors' um, wishes are, and it, it sounds as if it's it's a positive um, positive uh, reuse. Step. Use. Positive. P positive for the neighborhood. Yeah, and the I guess. Yeah, sure. Man. So I mean, that's I, uh, that. That's the way I look at it. I mean, it's uh, it'll actually clean clean that area up quite nicely. And I agree with John. I, I think that we should recommend it uh, the uh, uh, to the planning uh, from the planning board to the ZBA. To approve those uh, things, and uh, then we can vote on it. Okay. If as long as they I get their references. Max, you want a mic, Max? How, how do you feel on this? We're taking do you have a any? Hole. Do you have any? Uh, how do you feel about this use, even though it's like not zoned? Well, they, they if they eliminated the north field, uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't need their variance for the sides. Right. And we, we discussed and it. If they eliminated the north one, it'd allow them to close out that thing. I mean, they, they want to put something on top of something they haven't taken care of. So. Yeah, fine. <coughs> I know the public hearing closed, but just to clarify, it has been taken care of, so there is a, a cover on the material there, so the, the, allow, the use will be allowed under the DEP, so there's no conflict with the statute. So this is typically what happens on brownfield sites throughout the state of Massachusetts. There's contaminated material, buildings get constructed on them, homes get constructed on some of them, so it's not in conflict with the statute and it's not in uh, conflict with Mass General Law.
So, um, for my part, um, I feel very conflicted with our zoning, um, our regulations. I feel like we make regulations and then um, we're, we made these regulations some time ago. Um, we did, you know, miss the mandate when we looked at another project um, to review um, the solar. We've been to be in our defense, very busy with, uh, we got solar. our business with marijuana right away, and now we're back to solar and marijuana is right around the corner. Um, so it feels like there are a lot of things, new industries that are coming to our town. Um, uh, to that point, I also think that we are um, in an awkward position of going against our own decision making of a few years ago uh, without the um, advantage of foresight in terms of what solar was going to be uh, down the road. We were early in the solar project and we looked a lot at residential solar um, installations and not so much in our bylaws. Uh, we were concerned about these large scale, we kind of scaled them up and put them off. Um, so I, I, I feel that, um, similarly to Max, I feel like the size of this is, um, it just could be scaled back and then it really wouldn't be a problem. Um, and uh, that we are not, as a town, um, we're a little flat-footed on it. And so we're asking the CBA to uh, help us fix our zoning bylaws, our bylaws one by one. Um, this is to Mr. St. Peter's point. Uh, this is a great use in, in lots of ways, but it is against our regulations, and we start tossing our regulations into the air like this um, without actually taking the time, committing ourselves to reevaluating re them. I think that this is a call to that. Um, I don't know. Do we have to make a recommendation? We do, right? Mm. I think well, we should. Um, I, I, I did want to say that um, that we agreed some months ago that we need to review these yes. solar yes. Uh, bylaws because things have changed, things have changed. Uh, technically on, on, on size and use of panels and so forth so that um, what, we, what we set up originally was on panels that, that were not um, correct a, as um, I mean, I efficient we, as the ones that there are today. So we do have that, but that uh, but that also doesn't affect the uh, thing. But the other thing that kind of convinces me that maybe we should say okay on this is that um, uh, they want to use this land for something, and this is probably the least offensive use that we could put in there. Um, that's granted yeah, not not um, you know it's not zoned for that but on the other hand the salt shed was and and um, and other things like that can possibly go in there so uh, it, it seems as though this might be the least objectionable option for that land mr. Murrow <laughs> I, think uh, I think we have to we're gonna make a recommendation Shall we vote to make a recommendation to the I CBA? move to recommend this project to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, sir. Second. I will second that. Thank you. Um, those in favor of recommending it to the um, CBA for consideration? Any discussion? Oh, any any discussion? discussions? Oh. Yes, um, the only reason yeah. that I am recommending it okay. is because of the positive, positive no, okay. Influence from the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Positive yeah. input. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All, all those in favor of uh, <coughs> recommending this to the ZBA for consideration? Aye. 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 Uh, against? And I am. Um, I am. I'm uh, really conflicted. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to abstain. So, do we have any no's? Yeah, one no. One no. Okay, so it sounds like it's three one one. Yeah. 
So there you go. Okay. Yep. Okay, so at this time I'd like to open up the planning board meeting. Um, zoning board. Zoning I'm, I'm board. sorry, excuse me, zoning board. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be on the planning board. Yeah. Um, we'll have so, to get you guys some gloves to beat, beat it up, um, Rachel. And before we discuss, is are there any comments from the audience for the ZBA? Sure. John? Yep. And, uh, John Drabinski, and I really appreciate you know, what you folks are doing. And after <coughs> a former planning board member for four years and former selectman for 27 years. So zoning is something that we, we create, try to look forward. And I think the discussion the planning board just had shows you what zoning is about and how things can change and how technology, technology can change. And as uh, town fathers, you have to look at what is really in the best interest of the town. How, how is the community going to go forward? And I think the, I wasn't involved with the salt shed thing. I wasn't aware of that, but that's type, the type of use that I think um, you collectively have to think what's in the best interest of the community. Um, chapter 40A, section 10 gives you the ability to do what you think you can do. Um, so I, I would suggest to the town fathers collectively here to think outside the box. What, what could happen here in the next 20 or 30 years? This is locked in place. And um, maybe one thing to think about, uh, Should we have the variance would go with this parcel, but maybe there's some way to say after the 20 years that the variance uh, goes away so that uh, it, the variance gets negated, so it goes back to its use. Just something to think about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again. Thank you, and I know. <laughs> Bruce. There again, I, I truly do believe this is the best use of this property. However, uh, it is totally against the bylaws. The bylaws specifically prohibit an extra large ground mounted solar installation in a commercial zone. And part of what I quoted before was the chapter 40A, except where local ordinances or bylaws shall expressly permit variances for use. No variance may authorize a use or activity not otherwise permitted in the district in which the land or structure is located. This is totally opposed uh, in uh, contradiction to what is on the use chart. It is specifically says no. I would hate to lose it, but, um, and I don't know what the answer is, other than, as Mr. Ante said, um, you know, cut it back to two, two megawatts and allow it as a commercial and or uh, request that the zoning board and the planning board uh, get together something to um, amend the bylaws at the next town meeting, and I don't know whether uh, uh, this particular outfit can uh, would take the chance of putting on two, with the chance that it be, the uh, uh, structure get amended at the next town meeting and apply uh, to expand it at that point. Thank you. Thank you. Rich. I wasn't at the last meeting, so I don't think I'm eligible. You too. Uh, the requirements are that you read the draft or whoever is going to vote had previously written. And it's a meeting. No, that I don't. Just like clarification, we okay. will okay. before we all get into the discussion. Okay. We have to be six people on there right now. Six, okay. We only need five. Right. Right. Mr. Chairman? So. Got Sure. Let me just address Rich's question. Certainly. Bernie's voting. Adam? Sure. You read the, okay. Yeah. I will vote. Yeah. I read the minutes. Yep. And Mr. Decker? I will vote. I participated in the last hearing. Yeah. Right. So I think he should have, if he participated, he should have, you know, and I'm an alternate member, he should vote instead of me. That's my opinion. I don't. Okay. okay. I, I mean, accuse yourself. Okay. So Bernie? Uh, myself, Chris, Rich, and Bob Decker. Thank you. 
You're welcome. My name is Matt Nori. I'm with Urban Green Technologies, um, which is um, the developer of this product as well. Um, so I just wanted to comment just on a few things. Um, one of them, I know you've asked about the size of the project and how possibly could it be downscaled to two megawatts. Um, to be honest with you, we, we've looked into that. We looked into how could we possibly not you know, reduce the tree clearing there. Um, originally, we did actually propose, we were looking at developing a project actually larger, but there's a lot of wetlands on the site. Um, so there's a lot of actually area on that whole parcel. And that parcel itself is actually kind of hugs the rail yard and goes around to the end of the north. Um, that rail yard itself is actually leased by the uh, Commonwealth of Mass. Uh, it's actually leased, Pan Am leases it from the Commonwealth. Um, so I've looked into that part to other areas of the parcel we've assessed, and there's wetlands all over the riverfront, wetlands, and it's all throughout the property. Um, this area, as you know, has been with the lake asphalt. It's already cleared. Um, regarding the size of it for two megawatts, we looked into trying to downsize it. The problem is we've run into the cost of construction equipment and also interconnection with Eversource. Um, and that's the other issue. That's where that cost assumption comes from. And then the project would essentially be unfeasible. Um, to be honest with you right now, where what, it, what it's at at 2.7 megawatts, it's, <laughs> it's very tight as it is. Um, the comment, on, what, one thing I wanted to add as well was the, um, I, this is facing a time constraint. I know I've mentioned this before. Um, I don't mean to rush a vote. That's not our intention. We want to just, we know there's a formal process. Um, there's the SMART program in Massachusetts. That opens up on November 26th, um, and that window closes November 30th, um, and that's the first round of bidding. Um, that's kind of, there's been a backlog of solar projects for two years in the state of Massachusetts. The original program, the previous program was SREC 2. Um, that program has been extended further on. However, this was really not known that SMART was gonna be delayed by two years. So there's been a backlog of projects for two years waiting to apply. Um, the floodgates open on November 26. Um, that's why we did ask at our previous meeting um, for the special meeting by the planning board to work with the zoning, to meet with the zoning board as well um, to come try to come to a decision um, just because there is that time constraint involved. And I know there's our other solar projects with the town as well um, who are facing that same deadline. So, Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. What would prevent someone on a project like this doing an A&R and separating the property into two properties, and then you would be <laughs> somewhat in compliance other than that. I mean, in the, in the two, two separate projects? Right, two separate um, projects. By the, uh, the SMART program regulations, you're only allowed one project <coughs> per parcel. <coughs> per parcel? Per parcel, that's correct, sir. So, so this but, is- But by doing an A&R and separating the properties, it would be two parcels. You're, that would have, you're, all, you're, you're, not, you're not allowed to uh, subdivide parcels as well. That is, that's kind of, um, that's kind of gaming, gaming the system. Yeah, and I th uh, think that window closed in 2010. You could do an A&R up to 2010 and uh, subdivide parcels, but DOER recognized that people would start playing games, and they said after 2010, no more A&Rs to split up projects. So just, and just to add, because this parcel itself is actually how it's south here, and actually wraps around the rail yard. But, uh, oh, there you are. Um, in, red, in red is the actual parcel itself. Um, as you can see, we're proposing the project is there, a little bit there. Um, it's actually about 104 acres itself, and that's why on the common with John is that um, people were looking at, you know, a whole parcel, 200 acres. I could just divide this up and do multiple projects because you're limited to a total size of six megawatts. So they closed the loophole. Yes, they closed that loophole because <laughs> people were going with that, and municipalities as well, you know, they were seeing the tax advantages of doing that too, and you know, approving these projects for the tax revenue. So that has been, that is um, a new regulation that's been closed with SMART program that you cannot subdivide properties, parcels. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Now, does a SMART program, that starts with two and a half or bigger megawatt prop, uh, proposals? Uh, I mean, it, yeah, it, can, it starts, um, uh, the, uh, the minimum amount, I believe, is, I want to say 500 kilowatts. Okay. Don't quote me on it, to be honest with you, but it's, it starts at 500. I thought that there was a push for large. There's, there's a In push order to get the you know, to give the rebates and the incentives that they're giving to these projects to get the bigger projects done mm -hmm. so they can get that solar power on the grid. Yes, I mean, there is, um, I mean, with the, the larger projects, the, the most you can actually um, develop is six megawatts, is five megawatts AC. Now, the previous program, SR2, was six megawatts DC. The smart program is five megawatts AC is what you're limited to for development. Mm -hmm. Frank, I have a question. Okay. What is the intent 
for the if if the board chooses to approve this variance, what is the intent relative to the remaining acreage uh, on the parcel and further development or what? The remaining acreage, um, like I said, we did look through it. There's there's a lot of wetlands. Um, we did we had the whole you know I mean we had a, we had our area delineated. There are maps available um, as well so too. So if but there's if the board yes, chose <coughs> to grant the variance, mm -hmm. they might choose to put a restriction on further development of the parcel. Okay. Would that be acceptable? Just one note too. When you say the parcel, there's also the back half of Can Am as well. So we had. Can on the back side here. This is all just one continuous. But I'm talking about the, the sections that haven't been developed. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm talking about any coming in two years from now asking well, for another special down. permit for something or a variance. Well, the variance would the variance would only allow for the solar use, correct? That is true if it's restricted just to the 10 acres, but if it's restricted to the whole parcel, it would conference the whole parcel the very, I mean the, the restriction well, I don't know if you actually need a restriction because it's all wetlands the, the, the zoning variance would be excuse me just for this particular project no other uh, solar projects could be constructed out there this is it so it's one I'm parcel talking, I'm you're talking other uses yes other uses yeah, I I can't speak we can't speak for the railroad but maybe we can have that discussion with them but based on the wetlands map, there's very little they can do out there. The railroad signed the application, though, didn't they? Yeah. They yeah. Said. And what, what I can say, too, though, is, like I said, we did look into trying to develop. We originally, we're looking at doing a project about, to be honest with you, 5 megawatts AC. Is, I mean, the bigger, the better. Uh, I apologize. We were looking at trying to do a project at 5 megawatts AC um, just to have something larger. Um, but like I said, we did. It's all wetlands. It's all wetlands in this, in the bottom portion down here. That's not being cleared at all. That's all um, wetlands. And even over here, this is all riverfront. And that is all wetlands as well in there. Um, and that's why we, we can't develop anything in that area. So that's why we didn't um, do a site plan for any of that development in that parcel. I, I just want to make sure we close the door mm -hmm. for any further commercial activity mm -hmm. and solar on that particular site. <coughs> I mean, existing commercial activity is fine, mm -hmm. and and if the variance is granted, the solar may be fine. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure that we're not going to see something else come in a year from now that's without, you know. Mm -hmm. That's my point. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Rich, I'm going to clarify what you built there. Nothing that requires sanitary facilities. There is no work test. The land will not work. There is no water. So the only things that can go in there are something that doesn't require sanitary facilities. And that would apply, actually would apply to salt check if anybody asks. I have a little bit different question that I'd like to ask if anybody's done the research. Pan Am has a history of not paying their taxes to the town. I do not know if they're behind on their taxes now, but we have in place a bylaw in town that allows no permits to be issued on property that owes back taxes. So, any decision you would make tonight, I would like it to contingent upon the fact that those back taxes are paid, and that particular piece of property could become non-compliant with back taxes after it's built, and I'm asking questions about how are we going to be assured that we will be receiving the property taxes and the taxes from that property in this final on place. Thanks, Rich. Yes. I just want to, I just want to clarify too, um, we are with um, our land lease with Pan Am. Um, we are paying the portion of the real estate taxes. I know Pan Am, keep, they pay the bill. We're paying Pan Am for our portion of the uh, 20 acres that is being used, um, uh, the, that portion of the real estate taxes. And then we do plan for the personal property taxes um, in the process of negotiating the, uh, the pilot agreement, payment in lieu of taxes um, with, the, with the town as well. So, and that would be paid by us. 
Thank you. However, Pan Am it would be paying the property tax. That, that is correct. So that's why, and to, my, and to my knowledge as well, because before we did um, execute a land lease with them as well, as we do have a copy of um, the tax card with them. To our knowledge, they are up to date. This was a couple months ago, though, um, as well. So I mean, I can definitely make sure though. So we can definitely make sure that everything's resolved. Because, because, because Richard brought up a good point. Mm -hmm. What's their assurances down the road mm -hmm. if the town isn't receiving payment on a property right, right. for taxes? I understand. I mean, like I said, I can't. I, unfortunately, I can't speak on behalf of the railroad I can just um like I said all I can tell you is that I know with the personal property taxes we are proposing to the town that was being paid from us to the town not by Pan Am um, and like I said we'd be paying our portion of the real estate taxes maybe if they don't pay the taxes the town will own another solar yeah, field you <laughs> <laughs> thank you Bruce so, no thank you I hope they pay the taxes, you guys, but go ahead. Okay. Well, I'm going to address this part. It's a two piece thing. Where the solar panels are going, is that Commonwealth of Mass Land? No, it's Pan Am. Okay. Because if it's Commonwealth of Mass Land, it comes under the jurisdiction of the state building inspector, we lose everything connected with that. And this is not in Commonwealth of Mass. We become the permanent authority and collect the fees. Right. So you would be the permitting authority and collect the fees. That's right. So going back to what I asked, with the construction permit issue, our bylaws um, except the would allow uh, the, the, the restriction you're talking about uh, would be if the uh, permit is issued to these people, or wherever they are, on the they would land. No, on the Pan Am. Because Pan Am is not. Uh, and we were issued Right. But what I'm saying is, Pan Am, we cannot use that, uh, by our own law, we cannot use that to reject construction because construction is for them and not Pan Am. Right. The construction would be on Pan Am. I read it tonight, and I don't believe that's, it should be read that way, but um, where is that? I don't believe it is, unfortunately. Um, what we're today is that permit for back taxes over on any piece of property. I would deny it in the way for a legal opinion. So to clear things up, you guys are leasing the property. For that is correct. We are leasing the property. We do the land. And we, and we do have we do have an interconnection services agreement with our source as well that was signed in uh, June that was June twenty um, this year. That, was, that is that is pretty much allowing us that says that we are able to interconnect to the existing um, utility grid with upgrades that come out of the the, the, um, the cost of the project. The project has to pay for those upgrade costs. Okay, if there's no other comments or questions, I'll close the meeting to the public and then the ZBA can talk about it. I think make a motion we close the discussion. Or I should close uh, public okay. comments. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Decker? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. 815, uh, we'll close the zoning board public meeting for our discussion. It's who yeah. wants to start with their thoughts on this? I'll start with it. Okay, Bernie. Um, I am in favor of it if it stays with the existing zoning restrictions. This is voted on by the town, um, and I'm not going to sit here and say that the town should do something, that I should override what the uh, town meeting said. Um, if they want to bring it to uh, town meeting and change the zoning laws, then that's fine. But uh, 
you know, I own property and I have to follow the zoning laws and it restricts and it's taken a, a great deal of money away from me, but I follow the laws because that's what the town voted on. And uh, I would be uh, upset uh, if I went and said, go ahead and do what you want to, and then the restriction comes back where I'm restricted, and then come back to the town and come to the ZV and say, yeah, uh, I, want, I want to change in the zoning laws. Uh, we, we passed these laws. It was passed as a republic in a town meeting, the representatives, um, and people bought, bought what it was. They voted for it. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that those people were wrong. Even though there's good use, I can understand that. But um, my responsibility is to follow the laws. And as far as I'm concerned, this is a law in the town of Deerfield that we all voted on legally. Um, and I'm going to follow those laws. And I, my vote is no. It stays with C2 100 foot setbacks all around to protect the people. And I think that's what we're supposed to do. Those are put in there for a reason. Uh, I live on River Road. I know what the traffic is like. Uh, it's a scenic area, and I want it to stay that way. And I think with a 100 foot setback, we protect those things. We start cutting back to 50 feet. We start uh, going away from what the meaning of what we were trying to do was. And so I'm, my vote is no. Well, I'm not going to be voting on this. Uh, we, got, we already determined that. And, uh, you know, I think it, it may be, un, you know, in an unfortunate spot. I would, I would tend to lean a little bit towards that the planning board and the town put a lot of time and effort into, into the zoning bylaws with, with, uh, and they're, they're with the solar stuff. And I remember going to those meetings and they had public comment and we voted on them in the town meeting. You know, maybe there could have been more foresight as, you know, because the wattage was, or megawatts and all that changed and that kind of was behind some of the thinking that I think went into what scale of a project is and I think it's a pretty big you know they're asking us to change you know to really disregard a lot of that um, you know and the setback for a hundred foot I, I mean I don't know I mean I think it's probably you know, they're not asking for 75, they're asking for 50. I mean, uh, I would uh, I would probably abstain or, or, or vote no. And, and, you know, with the, the, the idea that the town should address that, the planning board should address the, the, the laws that if, if the town wants more solar, and, you know, we can't really predict what's 30 years from now is going to, come and you know I understand the residents that are there now are either neutral or for this from what we've heard but um, things change down the road and um, maybe it's I understand what Richard said about the water and stuff but you know you don't know if 15 years from now there's a sewer expansion or there's water expansion and that you know it's a different type of, of taxable area and I think that's why they didn't want solar in commercial districts because they thought there would be more commercial property. So that's that's how I see it. Chris, well, um, I agree that uh, one of the things uh, said a couple times earlier that um, these are all templates for us to follow, and the reason that the ZBA is here in the first place is to interpret any variations to that, and especially if it's for the um, benefit of the town and the happiness of the neighbors. And so I think I agree with the majority of the planning board. I think that um, I'd vote yes. Thanks, Chris. Rich? I feel the way Chris does. Same pretty much. Stay back here. I said I feel the same way Chris does. I think that the board needs to make a finding that it's in the best interest of the town because of the uniqueness of the property and the fact that it, it's it's very, very unique. And I, if I would vote for it, would the restriction that it, the development of that parcel be restricted to the, what's what's already there and what the variance is? And uh, But we need to do, if we grant a variance, we have to make a finding. And one of the things is the finding is that it's in the best interest of the town because of the unique character of the property. Okay? So if there is a motion, 
I will support it, but we need to make finding first, and then we, then you go on to grant the variance. In my understanding. And lastly, I, I feel strongly um, with what Bernie said. Um, I don't think it's our position. I think we should let the town decide uh, what the zoning bylaws should be specific to solar. It seems like it's an ever-changing business. The size of panels, the height of panels, the the amount of um, electricity that's generated. I, I think that that's going to be continuously changing, and I think we do need. Uh, the town to all be on board with what we sh can be consistent with for everybody. Um, and but and I agree with the solar people that you know it's a great use of the property. Uh, the, the neighbors are excited because they're not going to get anything else in there that they might not want. But I, I don't feel comfortable overturning or changing what the towns already decided. Well, uh, do you want, at this time, do you want to ask the petitioner if he wants to withdraw his application? I, I will, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we're all set here. Um, so I guess at this time, would you like to proceed or withdraw your request? I'm just trying to think if it looks like in one extension, I'm just trying to come to I, I'm not voting either not way. I'm not voting, so uh, Bernie would be a, a, a no, I would be a no, and we have three three in favor. So would that be an affirmative vote or it would not? Takes four. Takes four. So if we don't withdraw, if we turn it down. Mm -hmm. Two years. Two years. Two years. Basically the town of Airfield will lose any solar advantage there because the smart will be closed. Mm -hmm. So but it is a hundred at that site so we're asking no. the site you, you're asking for a variance I can, I just let's make one statement so the John's correct the, the setback requirements for you know, acceptable use in the commercial zone is less than 100 feet under the specific to section 3800. So that's a condition on large scale solar, not on no, not commercial offers. Correct. 50 on the front and 25 on the sides. Mm -hmm. yeah. Frank? Yes. We should point out to the, to the uh, petitioner that if uh, they withdraw, they can come back, mm -hmm. right? If they're turned down, uh, they can wait two years, or they can take us to court mm -hmm. if they thought that they had a good argument. <coughs> I don't think it's anyone who does this court. It was like someone who sat in these books. Yeah. So it's not a very pleasant thing to do. No. So I think, so I, I guess most likely we'll withdraw, but what could we bring back to convince, to you I just want to hear what Rich has to say. If if you take a vote tonight and you vote negative, okay, and you don't withdraw, there's a two year time frame, okay? If you go to the planning board who seems to be supporting you and petition the planning board to change the bylaw, that can happen at the annual town meeting. And then you can you won't need to petition the zoning board if the planning board changes the bylaw. But the hardship scenario and thing, uh, once they take the vote, the vote is the vote, okay? That disappears. You know, I understand that. That's why yeah. so you have the option of these hearings. I think Frank is saying you have the option to withdraw or we're going to take a vote. And I think 
that's what he's trying to get decided. And as, as you heard the planning board, they were in favor of doing this, so I can't see why they wouldn't be in favor of changing the bylaw. And that's only adding a few months to the project. Well, it's not us that changes the bylaw. It's now us that we make a suggestion. Now we make a suggestion. The bylaw. But the planning board has submitted, and the planning board has to say that we are recommending that bylaw change. Okay? If that doesn't get changed, the other thing I want to point out that doesn't affect this vote at all at this point is that if they gave a 50 foot reduction to this, apparently they're not going to go. That would be setting a precedence, which would allow almost anybody to come into town and ask for a 50 foot set, a 50 foot reduction in the setback. It's a little tricky. No, I give you enough. Obviously, you granted a variance in the Lake Silver to uh, <coughs> put a six megawatt in the residential zone. So I don't consider that precedent, but the ZBA has a, a history of looking at land use and looking at what's the best use of the community saying, okay, based on the statute, you have the ability to grant the variance. It seems like in this situation, you don't feel that you want to grant the variance, which is fine. So based on that, I guess you I have a question. Uh, uh, what, Mr. Olmstead? Yes. Sorry. Skip Olmstead. Okay. I just had a question, actually, the planning board. Uh, I don't know how long it takes the planning board to go through the process for a zoning change. Does that need to take place at, a, at an annual town meeting, or can that take place at a special town meeting? It can be a special town meeting. We've got a special town meeting coming up. Whether there's enough time or whether the selectmen would be willing to consider changing the upcoming date for the special town meeting. It's I, I, getting to a little complicated, yeah. but I, I don't think that. Yeah, I, there's not enough time. I, I mean, because first of all, we'd have to get the new uh, regulations drafted, and then we'd have to have a public meeting uh, for that or public hearing for that um, and then depending how that went then we'd have to schedule I think our special town meeting is scheduled for third third. yeah it's it's about th two or three weeks so yeah so that's more question is, could that be put off, if it was worth it, yeah could that be put off until January? I mean I not yeah Well, there, there were a few other things that we had to deal with, yeah. I don't, I don't, I think they were needed to be done by the end of the year. There's a couple of articles. Uh, <coughs> uh, you made a comment that that was Lake Asphalt or was RA? That's what you said. Lake Asphalt was, Lake Lake Asphalt Asphalt. was RA. Is that what you said? Residential agriculture? No. We, well, you said it'll be a, we allowed a variance for this other project. No, for, you, for Lake Solar. Um, the materials okay, I, right. Mr. Kalashevsky, isn't that commercial property up there? To change C two. C two. So we yeah, didn't. And uh, they right. did the. You can't see that from the road. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, my feeling is, you come back with uh, fitting the guidelines. I'll vote for it in a heartbeat. I'm not against the system, but we got the zoning laws. We need to stay by them, and that's the way it is. And uh, I'm to protect the people that live here in this town, and that's what my job is. And if people are unhappy with that, I guess they can take me out of office. But I'm. This is my point of view, and I'm going to stick by it. Um, and I think you can build two, two, uh, two megawatt systems. Because I, I put some of these in myself, so I know that there are a lot of things that you can do. These are not cut and dry. So I think you could put a two megawatt system in there without too much trouble within these, within these sections. Now, I might be wrong, but, and Mr. St. Peter, you're an electrician. You see these things go in. Not willing to, not in your. <laughs> but they go in, and uh, like I said. Yes. 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 Yes.
this is a non-permit. That's a special permit for the planning board, correct? Right. right. Mm -hmm. First, one other thing, um, for potential, I don't know how this affects theirs, <laughs> but for the potential of the economic benefit, uh, even if the select board were to hold their meeting, their special town meeting on December 3rd, they still might economically for the town uh, <coughs> the planning board to uh, look at amending the bylaws and having another special uh, town meeting, uh, even though it costs several thousand dollars. Several thousand dollars is cheap money compared to a 20 year fire. Mm -hmm. So, 35 people in this town. Well, I do know when we did the solar bylaws, all of a sudden one day there was solar, and everybody was scared. What, what, what is what is this? You know, what's what's it going to do to our community? So we, we, I'm speaking for myself, but I think I speak for whoever did the bylaws. We were ultra conservative, ultra conservative yeah. with the setbacks and things like that. And, and I know personally, for at least a year, I've been bringing us up, hey, let's revisit this, let's revisit this. So I, I think, uh, yeah. So, and I really respect the ZBA for standing behind the current bylaws. <coughs> That's what you're here to do. You spent a lot of time. I mean, this, yes. I'm sure you did. Yeah, I, this is not easy. And you know, you're going to make people angry. You know, when you when you do zoning, you're going to make some people hang, angry and some people happy. Well, the first but, criteria for a variance is, is it in direct conflict with our bylaws? And the answer is, yes, it is. So. What, what do we do with the, the, six, the six megawatt that we did for? The only uh, not, I had our meeting up here. Yeah, yeah, somehow the so. meeting got opened back up to the public. So uh, <laughs> we were we were Sorry, discussing it. So I guess I'm going to close it again to the public. Here. Oh, before I do so, uh, once again. I want to see if I can add one. Just comments, just to speak down. Okay, last comment. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, just to speak down with um, mm -hmm. why the request for the fifty foot setback is um, this area here is very. Um, if there was a hundred foot, we did follow hundred foot setback bylaw, which is which um which is the bylaw. Um, the developable area would be pretty much about the size of that building dock, and that essentially there's the project we wouldn't be able to do two megawatts. And I did look into this: how could we get by without going the ZBA process of requesting the setback variance? What can we do with not with one hundred foot? And it's just it's just not feasible once you add it. And then also mostly. downsize the project and try to make something work a smaller size is um, the interconnection service agreement already signed with other sources for 2.7 megawatts. Initially it was actually signed for larger until we found more wellness. We've had it revised once. Evident dropped to two, which would so require a social permit or even lower than two megawatts. Regardless, <coughs> we go back and we can back to the other source. That process works by pretty much first come, first serve. We would have to that we'd have to actually cancel I say go back and reapply with whatever source, which is a nine month process. And that would essentially, like I said, the smart program, no one really knows what's going to happen when the flood gets open on the 26th. All I can say is there's 1.6 gigawatts proposed in the state of Massachusetts. Um, the program does not have that much space. The smart program did not make that. And, um, well, I mean, I get what you're saying, yeah. but before you went to Eversource, you could have came here and read our bylaws. Right, but. But ultimately, they needed to get their project rolling. And one of the pluses of this project was that they did have that interconnectedness, which is a process that other projects that have come before us have not been able to get. So. And that's one of the issues is I wish I had an recommendation. Is, um, there's, there was a recent map from SDOER which showed the, the capacity proposed in the state of Massachusetts at both our source and national grid. Um, like I said, there's only 1.6 gigawatts proposed. And um, the existing quality infrastructure in the state of Massachusetts is going to be maxed out with the smart program. Um, substantial upgrades are going to be needed on both the local level and the transmission level. Um, so it's, 
I don't quote me on it, but it's one of the last now big solar pushes in the state for now. So substantial upgrades are done on the state level. Um, so again, I guess I just wanted to clarify um, that the people are set back. So we, it's just mostly this portion here. Um, if we did 100 foot setback, really that loading dock that's already existing is what would be actually what we deal with at parcels um, because it wouldn't be able to be done. Um, and it's just really, you know, just a uniqueness. We said the uniqueness of the parcel itself is what we're requesting. Thank you. Thank you. Frank, you need an answer. <coughs> okay, so we'll will, know. will we accept the withdrawal without prejudice? All those in favor? Aye. Accept the withdrawal without prejudice. Do you need my vote? No. <laughs> <laughs> We need three votes for this one, Bernie. I understand. <laughs> okay, so it'll be noted that Bob, Rich, Chris, myself, and Adam can take a withdrawal. Yep. I want you to do something tonight. <laughs> Thanks. I'd say before the vice candidate, before you go looking at changing the solar bylaw, and we'll see what happens with the smart program. Thank you. Thank you. Well, nothing really. If since we're still open, I have to okay, I do. don't believe we have any other correspondence here. We've already accepted the minutes with the change. Um, yeah. the business. That's the only reason we're here. Yeah, yeah. So you had to make a motion. On the agenda. So oh, here. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, has no, anybody no, seen no, Brian no. after? I make a motion that we close the planning board meeting. I'll second the motion. Aye. Aye.